Time for another video on the G5 iMac. And today we're gonna to do something that we haven't actually done yet, and that's install OS X. So as you may know, if you've been following the series, we've tried a few Linux distributions, we managed to fix some hardware issues. Uh, and so I wanted to actually take this back to how it would have been at the end of the supported time for PowerPC. So I have a copy here of OS X Leopard in its shiny goodness. And we're gonna get this installed on our G5 iMac and check it out and see if it's still an OS that you could actually use in 2024, what software is available still. And uh, yeah, what can we do with our G5 iMac? Well, that's a little concerning. It's actually in the process of editing another video and it just shut off dead. It wasn't finished installing, it just, just shut off. Uh, well, hopefully it turns back on. That's a good sign at least. There is obviously a concern here that, you know, there are bad capacitors, the power supply might not be up to the job, all sorts of things that could be wrong. I just hope it was just a random fluke. We'll go back through and try reinstalling Windows again, because yeah, OS X never finished installing. There's nothing currently on the drive. We'll go again. I'm not going to put you through watching that, but let's just try and get everything installed on here. And it's just done it again. Something's not right here. Uh, let's, I guess, open her up and see if we can see anything. On first inspection, none of the capacitors look particularly problematic. They all look quite happy. I will say that to the touch, the power supply is incredibly hot, like uncomfortably so. Um, this is also incredibly hot, but that makes a bit more sense. Concerned about how hot this is, and it could be that uh, there's an airflow issue somewhere. Um, the fans seem okay. At least this is the fan that's kind of handling most of this. So I'm going to just kind of try and give it a bit of a clean again, and then we'll try again. I definitely think what's happening, though, is that the power supply is... Yeah, that's really hot, is overheating and just shutting everything down. So let's see if I can check over the fans and see what's going on here. And of course, I just want to point out, because this really is the last Mac that Apple actually let anyone look in and, and easily do anything with, there are some dev uh, bits here. There is a, but a power button here, so you can actually start the board from inside. And you have indicator lights that tell you what point in the boot process everything is. So Apple can actually make computers that are easy to debug and work on. Just saying, could be done. Don't know if you can see that, but that is a screw loose inside the fan there. So I'm wondering if that got wedged and stopped this fan from spinning. That would definitely cause overheating issues. So I'm going to get that out and we'll see how things go. So it is much, much later in the day, but it did finally install. I think that was exactly the issue. That screw was stopping that fan. From, that screw was stopping that fan from being able to spin, which meant that it was overheating absolutely everything in there. And that is the biggest problem with the G5 system. It produces a lot of heat. 
They were never able to make a G5 laptop for that very specific reason. And also, lots of people speculate that that is the reason why they moved over to the Intel. The heat that these chips were producing was just getting way too much. And this iMac was basically as small as they could go and still have a G5 system. But we have macOS installed. Here we go. We're currently on 10.5.4. That's what came on the disk that I managed to pick up on eBay. But we have our 2 gigahertz power PC G5 with 2 gigabytes of RAM. So first things first, this isn't the latest version of Leopard. This isn't the last version that's actually supported on this architecture. So we need to update the system. And there is built-in software updates. We are connected to Wi-Fi. So let's see if it works. So that took a bit of a minute, but would you believe it? It has actually found the 10.5.8 update, which is the latest version of Leopard. And uh, it's already actually downloading it. So let's get this installed. Let's get the system up to date. And then I'm going to get some software installed on this. And we can, of course, play some games, see if we can surf the modern web, uh, and just generally what else we could do with a computer like this. Well, that took way longer than I would have liked. It is now the next day. Uh, I think I had some issues with the hard drive that I was trying to use. This this whole project is a little bit cursed. Uh, the drive I was using just gave out after I tried to install the update to OS X. So I tried a different drive. That one just flat out refused to do anything. So I eventually just gave up and reused the drive we've been using to install Linux. So unfortunately, Linux is now wiped, but we can always go back to Linux. It's not a problem. But more importantly, we are now on 10.5.8, which is the last official version of Mac OS X supported for this computer, which is good to see. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> That was quite quite a project, but we're there now. We're here, and we've got some bits installed to check out and see just how usable it is in 2024. The first thing that completely surprised me is that uh, Time Machine still works on here with a modern backup server. So I have a Time Machine backup server on the network. I use it to back up all my modern Macs. Uh, and it instantly found it, and it instantly was like, hey, do you want to do Time Machine? Do you want to start backing up? It's being very, very slow because it's doing it over Wi-Fi, and the Wi-Fi in this machine is horribly slow. But it is working. It is backing up, which is kind of cool. Uh, so, you know, even after 20 years, or I think this, was, this version of macOS was released in 2009, so, okay, not quite 20 years, but even in 15 years, Time Machine is still working, doing its thing, backing up, and I love to see it. I love to see this kind of backwards compatibility. But anyway, other than backing it up, what else can you do with a G5 iMac <laughs> in 2024? It might not be any surprise, but um, the amount of software that's available still is pretty limited. You're definitely going to have to use things like Macintosh Garden to find old versions of software and abandoned where that runs on PowerPC. Uh, but there's a few things that's still pretty usable. One of them is this really nice kind of word editor called Bean. Uh, it, it works perfectly. Hello. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to use this as a machine to just write documents, you can do that. It's, it's fast, it's fluid, it's got graphics acceleration, so the UI and everything else about OS X is completely usable. I really must admit, it runs very well. Uh, so you could definitely do that. And um, this is, again, obviously not something that's supported for quite some time. I believe this was, uh, yeah, 2012 was when this version was released. But it's still usable. It's still a functional word processor. So there's that option, that's for sure. Um, obviously, you could also get old versions of Word and stuff if you wanted to do that. Another thing is web browsing and browsing the modern web. Well, Safari 
doesn't really work anymore, especially if you're trying to access anything that uses HTTPS, which is most of the modern web. It doesn't have up-to-date certificates. It doesn't know how to do the, the handshakes for what uh, modern, the modern web is expecting. But we do have Arctic Fox. Again, unfortunately, this is a little bit old now. They haven't been releasing versions specifically for PowerPC in quite a long time. This uh, person called Wixnix uh, has been trying to backwards compile Arctic Fox for Tiger and Leopard. Uh, so this is from last year. And, and it's a very usable web browser. It's obviously based on Firefox. Um, you can definitely surf a lot of the web. No problem with Google. Uh, we can go to the Wikipedia page for the iMac and that works no problem at all. Completely usable if you wanted to use this for like searching Wikipedia. Uh, it will use go on some modern websites. For example, you can go on Apple's site and it will load. This The issue that we face is kind of modern JavaScript doesn't work well on here. So some things on some websites just straight aren't going to work. For example, images aren't loading in these fancy kind of views but you can still navigate the website. And some websites just flat out won't work at all if they're particularly JavaScript heavy. So yeah, the usability of the modern web is, is definitely swiftly crumbling as more and more people rely more and more on JavaScript to do fancy things. So yeah, okay, you could use this as a word processor. You could use this just about to surf the modern web. What about some, some gaming? Well. We do have some games installed. Let's, of course, start with um, the amazing Classy Cube, which is essentially a Minecraft kind of clone. Um, and this works surprisingly well. We are getting, as you can see there, 170-ish frames per second in this little window. But if we just make it bigger, so it's full screen, that's a bit better. Uh, and we're still getting a, a reasonable 60 frames per second. So. This is entirely playable if you really want to go back and play some classic, classic Minecraft uh, kind of sandbox version. You've got your original blocks and all that sort of stuff. So this definitely works and it's, it's rendering it pretty well. Uh, the graphics in this is obviously still fairly functional, which is good because I was worried when we were working with um, Linux that it was just dead because I couldn't get the drivers to work. So it does seem to be working. I will say I've noticed occasionally some graphical like glitches and things going weird with the screen, so it might be dying, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this perfectly functions. Another interesting one I found is someone has ported Half-Life, uh, or at least the version of Half-Life running on the Xash 3D engine, which is a backwards engineered version of the gold engine. So we're not, it's not the full game, but it does actually it does actually work surprisingly well. In fact, I think it's not even the first level. So as you might know, I do love using Half-Life as kind of a base test on, on retro computers gaming ability. So we have a version of Half-Life-ish running on the Power C Power CC. As you can see, there's quite a lot of textures missing. Um yeah, not quite sure what's going on. I don't know if that's just that it hasn't been ported yet. This is definitely an old version, someone compiled this quite a long time ago, so it's not running the latest version of Xash 3D, uh, and I'm not sure if we can just update it, but it, we're getting a modest 40 to 60 frames per second, which is kind of impressive. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. It's definitely a functional machine. Of course, there was a lot of games actually released for OS X. I know that it's a bit of a meme. It certainly has been for a long time that you can't game on Macs, and it's, it's rubbish and, and all that stuff. But there was actually a lot of games released for the platform. So if you can find yourself some copies or look up Abandoned where uh, you can go for it. And <laughs> the one thing I was able to find, which is quite hilarious to me, was Halo. Uh, now, I've never actually played Halo at all. Uh, I think I very briefly opened it when I was texting the, testing the Xbox 360. But I've never played the original Halo properly. So why not? Why shouldn't we play Halo on a Mac? And not just a Mac, a G5 PowerPC Mac. 
So we've got it set up here running at, on kind of low settings, medium textures, but at a more native resolution. And I have to say, it plays incredibly well. Uh, apparently my cat wanted to join in as well. There is his tail for your entertainment. Okay, I'm taking that as a hint to stop, otherwise I'm just going to play Halo all day. So there we have it. After a little bit of pain and suffering, the G5 iMac is running Mac OS X once again. Uh, that was kind of fun, actually. I'm definitely going to play some more Halo, whether it's on the G5 or if I get it up on the Xbox. I feel like I should probably play it on the Xbox, uh, but playing it on an Apple product just makes me laugh. Um, silly, really. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I would say it's the last video on the G5 for a while, but who knows, because I really love this machine. I think it's an interesting point in tech. It's the last time that kind of, obviously Apple were using PowerPC and the last time that there was another dominant architecture. And we're kind of reaching that period once again. Apple have once again moved away from Intel and uh, working on ARM. So I think we've, we've kind of reliving that shift in a different way, which is kind of cool. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do have any ideas on what else we could do with this uh, iMac, do let me know down below. And I will see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.